What's going on guys? I'm hanging out in my basement tonight and I've got my shades on and I'm trying to look cool and trying not to blind myself with all this bright ass LED that I've got going on around me and uh, just kind of hanging out like a little mushroom. It's dark down here, it's kind of dank down here and it's really chilly. It's like mm, 16 degrees Celsius or so. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, no idea, but it's cold. But I'm just tinkering with some LED stuff and I figured maybe I'll just throw the old iPhone camera on and record some of it and show you what I'm working on, show you how the plants are coming along and uh, just chill out for a bit. So first project is right in front of me. Let me just turn this camera around so you get a bit of a nicer view than this mug here. So project number one on the go is messing with these strips. I have a good collection of different strips. I've got uh, a couple Samsung F series. So this is the LTF 564B, which is the double row. LTF 562B, which is the single row F series. And then I've also got a Q series with those cool LM301B diodes, which can do like 200 lumens per watt. They're totally bitching. I also have an H series 282D one footer and a Bridgelux EB Gen 2 one footer because all you jerks have bought out DigiKey from all the two foot strips for Gen 2. So stop buying them so I can finally get my hands on one. If it can be 3000K or 3500K, I would be so happy to. So I'll make do though. We can use just one for now. And uh, yeah, I've got a thermocouple hooked up to this XTEC meter here. So that's reading temp in uh, degrees Celsius. And then I'm just monitoring my current very carefully on the fluke to make sure that I'm not overpowering these things. So the max current on both the uh, double row and the single row F series strips is 1.8 amps. So I've got this thing tuned to almost exactly half. We're at 0.899 amps or pretty much 900 milliamps. And I've been running it for a while and we're slowly but surely creeping up. But uh, actually I'm kind of surprised. I thought it would be moving a lot more quickly. Mind you, the ambient temp down here is pretty cold and much colder than most people's tents will be. But uh, yeah, getting that together, I'm gonna publish all that data and share what I find and uh, test it on a few different types of strips. I'm curious to see how the Q series co like performs compared to the F series and the HLG, like that QB96, I think there's gonna be absolutely no issue with that one because of the build. I mean, it's like an actual aluminum board, right? This thing is pretty solid. And the dials are spaced out so widely that really I don't foresee any problems running that thing pretty hard. So that's on the go. What else am I doing? I have this thing over here, which makes me so happy to come down and just kind of like stand around because it's so nice and green. I have two of those QB96s from Horticulture Lighting Group lighting the top shelf and I'm running a lot of romaine lettuce. I have to thin it out a bit, but uh, all these guys are romaine lettuce. And then I've also got some Merlot lettuce in the cup in the back there, as well as a whole bunch of different types of herbs. So I have dill, cilantro, some parsley. I got a stew going, baby. And a bunch of little rock wool, rock wool cubes, which are peppers that I'm germinating. A whole bunch of different peppers. Cow horn, which is a sweet one. Uh, Mor Maruga scorpion caramel, jalapeno, uh, Trinidad scorpion, bubblegum, seven pot red. Uh, yeah, a good variety. And I have a few more that I'm waiting for germination as well. So I think those are going to go probably in some sort of crack key setup I'd like to try. If you guys have seen that Kang Star dude on YouTube, he does some really cool stuff and a lot of crack key. So I'm going to give that a go and see how it works out. On shelf number two and the bottom shelf, I'm lighting it with my one footer uh, LTH 282D Samsung strips. It does pretty well. The PPFD is actually pretty comparable between those two HLG strips and these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strips on these shelves. Down here I have arugula on the right and more of that Merlot lettuce. And I'm gonna try and kind of like eat these and stagger them and replant them so I have like a continually replenishing supply. On the bottom, it's a mishmash of different shit that is kind of like just for fun. I have some beans, uh, cabbage, why not, right? And then I've got a pot of wildflowers because everybody needs some flowers in their lives, right? And then just for shits and gigs, I also have a Brussels sprout going on. So I'm pretty pumped about seeing some different stuff come out of here. And I think I'm gonna be really pressed for space when it takes off, but I'm gonna dedicate a, a pretty big chunk of the basement to more lights and more plants and more fun. 
So that covers that. The last thing, which is like my crowning achievement for <laughs> this month or maybe even this year, is this monstrosity that I've built in the corner. So I gathered up all my spare parts and junk supplies and everything and I built this tent, I guess you could call it, this seven foot fo foot tall tent that's insulated. And uh, if you guys remember, I'm doing that experiment with the different tomatoes. I have two different types of tomatoes running under an HLG65 from Horticulture Lighting Group and a Viper Spectra 300 watt, 300 watt LED light. And it, they have been really suffering because they were just kind of sitting out in the cold and temperatures are like, you know, 15 or 16 degrees or whatever it is down here and humidity is really low. So I finally got off my ass and made something out of styrofoam and man they have taken off you know I kind of ran out of room because I had like four plants under each one of these lights so as they started to grow then that just was way too much and I culled them so I picked the best golden sunrise and the best heartbreaker from each light and stuck with those these are the rejects <laughs> I was lighting them just for fun to keep them alive but that has stopped we're cutting them off pulling the plug and they're going in the garbage. Sorry guys, you just didn't make the cut. But check this out in here. Here is my experiment continuing on. So here's my HLG65. The temperature is a balmy 23.4 degrees Celsius, which works out to, flick my switch, 74.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. This uh, humidity is kind of, I don't know, I don't trust it on this sensor, but I do trust it on my little humidifier, so I think it's around 50% or 40%, somewhere in there. That's not gonna stay, we're just gonna throw this away. But, I also made these bitchin' cages today. I was gonna just buy some tomato cages because they were getting a little bit sprawly and kind of trying to collapse on me, but I figured I wanted something more industrial because I've had them just kind of break on me and I've bought some cheap ones before, but I wanted to make something that would last, so I bought this like wire paneling and just cut it. I had two sheets, I cut it into four and then bent it myself and just made these big ass cages. And I think it's gonna work out okay. So here is the gold, I was gonna say the golden shower. That would be like the worst fucking tasting tomato you've ever had. Here's a golden sunrise tomatoes. I'm not gonna give too much commentary on the two of them just because it's probably gonna sound like a broken record over every video. Suffice to say though, both of them are doing quite well. I would say if I were to make any comments on them, the Viper Spectra plant seems to have more flowers on this, uh, this type of plant. Like the HLG is starting to flower there's a chunk there and there's a few other bunches, but this one seems a little bit further along. And it also seems a little bit more spread apart. Like it's a bit taller, but it's uh, it's wider. Whereas this guy is like coming straight up the middle. Like, Get the fuck out of my way. I'm coming for you, light. So that's those two. And then in the back, I'm still rocking the little Heartbreaker F1s, which are gonna be really cool tomatoes. And they're a lot shorter. They're like a much bushier plant. Kind of, I'm not sure how these are gonna move, but hopefully you can kind of see. They're putting out a lot of flowers. I expect to get quite a few tomatoes out of this. This is the worst camera work I've ever seen or performed. <laughs> but you'll just have to trust me on those guys. This one is easier to see because the light is not pink. But yeah, they're they're a lot shorter than these ones by like a foot almost practically. However, there's a lot of flowers and I actually see a little tomato on this one. You're never going to see it because, oh, you can see it too, right there. See that guy? Where's my finger? Right here. Look at that. There's a tomato started. So I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, I'm going to keep trucking with this and uh, Essentially, this is uh, two two by two spaces. Like this space in here is about four by four. Like actually, it's really close to four by four. It's like forty-seven inches by forty-seven inches or something. So not bad. Like both of these lights, I think, are 
are rated for doing close to a 2x2, two two, whether it's a 1.5x1.5 1 1 or a 2x1.5 or something funny like that. It's close enough. So we're, we'll see how they do as these things climb up the cages and start spitting out tomatoes. And I know that this HLG65 isn't really meant to be a flowering light. Like, this is meant for vegging and for clones and whatnot. But I think, I think it's going to hang. We'll see. We'll see. So that's going to wrap it up. I don't have anything else to talk about or anything else to show you. But stick around. I have more stuff coming. I've got that uh, strip info coming sometime soon. I don't know when. Soon enough. And I'm also working on the, the next part in my series on the HLG drivers where we're talking about A-type versus B-type constant voltage and how, how you uh, use each of them, how they work, and what the pros and cons are. So stick around. We'll talk to you guys next time.